March 22nd, 9.47am, District Court, District Court, Defendant Lobby, Number 3. Adrian did it. That's what it looks like. Dude, no way. That woman couldn't do anything like that. In court today, there'll be a mountain of evidence that will implicate you. A mountain of evidence? I'm certain there is someone out there trying very hard to pin this whole thing on you. Please, Mr. Lawyer. Dude, like I said yesterday, I'm refreshing like a spring breeze, alright? Can't let any sort of scandal ruin that. I understand. Well, it's almost time. Mia. You must get a complete acquittal today. I know. But I can't focus on Maya's situation right now. Or Pearl's is either. No matter what, I have to focus on winning this case by the end of the day. Indeed. Well, let's get going. Beep beep beep. It's him. Beep. This is right. Good morning. This is it, Mr. Attorney. The day of the trial. M Maya, she's unharmed, right? Well, when I checked on her earlier this morning, she seemed a lit. How shall we say... Tired. Don't worry. People don't die that easily. Besides, what you really should be concentrating on is winning today's trial. <laughs> For my sake, as well as yours, you must win today's trial. Which is why... I sent you a little present this morning. Present? What in the world would you want to give me? You'll figure it out once the trial starts. And even if you don't like my gift, I expect you to graciously accept it and win the day's contest. If you please. Wait! Bip! The kidnapper sent me a present? Mr. Lawyer, dude, who is that? Uh, um, uh, no one. It has nothing to do with you, so forget you heard anything. Dude, did your nose just get longer? March 22nd, 10am, District Court, courtroom number 3. Court is now in session for the trial of Matt Ongard. Are the prosecution and defence ready? The defence is ready, Your Honour. <gasps> I say, Mr. Wright, what happened to Miss Von Karma? Uh, I don't know, Your Honour. Why are you getting mad at me? Your Honour, please be quiet, Bailiff. Court is in session. If you must tell me something, please keep it brief. Now then, what is it? Prosecutor... Prosecutor Von Karma has... This morning, Ms. Von Karma was shot by an unknown gunman. What? Sh shot? Somehow... I think this is the present that man was talking about. His present. Miss Von Karma is one of the top prosecutors in the country at the moment. If she were to disappear, it would be to your advantage. This... this is totally insane. Miss Von Karma, is she alright? I don't have that answer. She's alive and in stable condition. That's good. Whew. Y your... I thought he'd show up. Your Honor, due to the circumstances, Ms. Franziska von Karma cannot appear in court today. I, Miles Edgeworth, will be taking her place. Prosecution is ready, naturally. You probably guessed that this would happen when Edgeworth showed up in the previous video. <laughs> Ms. von Karma was shot in her right shoulder, and is currently undergoing surgery. Maybe not, you know, the shooting, but the Edgeworth being the prosecutor thing, yeah. <laughs> Luckily, I've looked this case over, and I'm familiar with the details. The prosecution seeks to prove the guilt of Mr. Matt Ongard. The court acknowledges the prosecution. Right. I finally found the answer I was struggling for on my long journey this past year. By the time this case comes to an end, you too will know the answer. Now then, 
the prosecution would like to call its first witness. Please bring Detective Gumshoe to the witness stand. Witness, your name and occupation. My name's Dick Gumshoe, sir. I am a detective at the precinct. For now. For now? After this trial's over, I'm supposed to turn in my badge, sir. Detective Gumshoe. Prosecution has no need for a depressed witness. Lift your head up and face forward like a proud officer, Detective Dick Gumshoe. Y yes, sir. Now, let's have your testimony. If we want to explore the various facets of this case, we must start with that. Get ready, Phoenix. This is going to be one very rough fight. Yeah, it would have to be with Edgeworth as my opponent. The answer he was struggling for. Interesting. Show me this answer you finally found, Edgeworth. Witness testimony. Bare facts of the case. This murder happened after the Hero of Heroes award ceremony, sir. The victim, Juan Corridor, was found dead in his hotel room. After looking into the cause of death, we believe he was definitely murdered, sir. At first, we thought there was something suspicious about the empty guitar case. However, we later found out that the guitar case had nothing to do with the murder. Hmm. Hmm. I agree, Judge. Hmm. <laughs> After the award ceremony ended, the victim was alone in his room? Yes, sir. Both the victim and defendant went alone to their rooms, sir. I see. Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Bare facts of the case. Okay, so... There's not a whole lot we can easily contradict here. We're just going to start pressing and find out what we can about the situation from Detective Gumshoe. Would you please give us a brief timeline of what happened after the ceremony? Okay, pal. The ceremony started at 6pm. It ended around 8pm, and then there was a short break. A special post-ceremony show was supposed to start in the lobby 30 minutes later. And that's when the victim's body was found, correct? Which is to say, the murder occurred during that 30 minute break period. Hmm. Please continue with your testimony, detective. Okay, so yeah, the murder happened between 8 and 8.30, according to what we can gather. The person who discovered the victim's body was Adrian Andrews, correct? Yeah. Who is this Adrian Andrews you're talking about? She's the defendant, Matt on guard's manager. She's a really pretty lady, so... Well, she is. She's also really gay. So, leave her alone, Gumshoe. <laughs> ah, she's, she's a pretty lady. I if she'll grace us with her presence. When the post-ceremony show was about to start, she went to get Mr. Ongard. After visiting his room, she next went to the victim's room to get him for the show, sir. I see. And that's when she found the victim's body? That wasn't a question, I shouldn't have gone up at the end there. Uh, the cause of death? Wasn't that because Mr. Corridor was stabbed in the chest? Only a careless amateur would believe something so brainless as that, pal. Take a good hard look at the crime photo. Now a real pro's attention will be drawn here, to this bandana. Hmm, banana. Um, his bandana, sir. That's the thing I dropped tightly around his neck, sir. Ah, yes, yes, I see. His banana-scented bandana. Then, what about the knife? It seems to have been stuck in the victim's chest on purpose after his death. Hmm, we have a crafty murderer on our hands here. Autopsy report added to the court record. Why did you think that? Because it was empty, pal. The German ninja doesn't go anywhere without his bright red guitar. And we couldn't find it anywhere at the scene of the crime. Oh, then how about this theory? A fan really wanted the guitar and did the crime to get it. How's that? Uh, we thought of that too, but... But? The only fingerprints on the guitar case were the victims. Only the victims, huh? Hmm, I see. Ah, so much for my theory, then. It's our case updated in the court record. Nothing to do with the murder. Hmm. What convinced you it had nothing to do with the case? 
The guitar wasn't at the Gatewater Hotel that night. Well then, where was it? The bright red guitar was eventually found at the TV studio. The victim, Juan Corridor, had apparently only taken the case with him, sir. So you mean he forgot to put the guitar inside the case? Yes, sir. Even when he was on stage for the ceremony, he didn't have his guitar. So that guitar case was empty even before he got to the hotel. Yeah, that's right. So it really had nothing to do with the case after all. Hmm. I believe that is enough. First, the victim was choked to death with his bandana. Then, after the victim was dead, the killer deliberately stabbed him with a knife. Hmm. Which brings me to our next point. Why, then, did the police arrest Matt on guard? Because there was reason enough to suspect him. Here it comes. Looks like Edgeworth's back in full swing. Very well. Detective Gumshoe, please testify about this matter. Yes, sir. Why arrest on guard? Witness testimony. <laughs> Matt on guard and Juan Corridor were huge rivals with each other. They each thought the other guy was in his way. That's moving up in my book. As for evidence, there's the Jammin' Ninja's button. It was ripped off with a ninja costume and was found in Mr. Ongard's Hakama. The defendant's fingerprints were also all over the knife. The defendant bought the knife for the crime, which makes this a premeditated murder. Hmm, so the defendant's fingerprints were found on the knife used in the stabbing. It was sort of sticky on the handle, so the fingerprints came out pretty clearly, sir. Knife added to the court record. And there's this button. That was found in the defendant's clothes, was it? Hmm. And is this button also covered in blood? Yes, and we know that the blood on it is the victim's blood, so... What? Jammer Ninja's button added to the court record. All of this points very clearly to the defendant, doesn't it? Yes, it most certainly does, Your Honor. Ready to give in yet, right? Hm. I'll find the hole in your argument somehow. You can press as hard as you'd like, just hurry up with your usual, usual pointless questions. <laughs> okay, so there's actually an obvious contradiction here. Uh, if we scroll through here to the end, uh, Gumshoe says that this was a premeditated crime because the, the defendant bought the knife for the crime. The problem is that the knife, which we're going to have a quick look at now, here it is, it says Gatewater in the handle. And that suggests that the knife belongs to the hotel, rather than that the defendant brought it to the hotel to kill people with. Therefore... Objection! Wait a second. W what? So the basis of your argument that this was a premeditated murder is simply that my client bought a knife beforehand? That's right, pal. The defendant did not buy this knife. Huh? Take a good look at the handle of this knife and you'll see what I'm talking about. Huh? It has a Gatewater seal set into the handle. Gatewater? I think I've heard that name somewhere before. That's the name of the hotel. The Gatewater Hotel. Uh-oh. The murder knife was actually property of the hotel. Which means this murder was not premeditated. Yes, that is very true. This is a very big... <laughs> what is it, Mr. Edgeworth? I'm sorry, the defense is simply too careless. What? I think whether the crime was premeditated or not has already been determined. H how so? I admit this knife is hotel property. There is no one currently on the police force that is dumb enough not to realise this. But I didn't know- oh. The question is, where did this knife come from? Why, that's obvious. It came from the victim, Mr. Corridor's room. Sorry, Your Honour, but that is incorrect. The victim ate a last meal before he was murdered, with that being the case. I would like to draw the court's attention to what is on top of the table. 
There is a knife and fork on the table. I mean, most hotel rooms give you more than one knife and fork. It could be another one from the room. Right? Right? <laughs> then, where in the world did this knife come from? If it pleases the court, I would like for us to recall the room of the defendant, Mr. Matt Ongard. Especially what was on top of his table. There is something missing. Perhaps it's a single knife? We investigated the leftover dishes for fingerprints, and while we were investigating, we came to the conclusion that Mr. Matt Ongard's knife was missing. Uh. Mr. Ongard had gone to the victim's room with the knife he had used during dinner. Why would he carry a knife on a visit? To kill, of course. And with that, I believe the prosecution has proven that this was a premeditated murder. Amazing, Mr. Edgeworth. Absolutely brilliant. A brilliantly clear deduction. It seems like Edgeworth had this plan from the very beginning. This must be one of those traps, and I just walked headlong into it. A murder weapon with fingerprints and a button from the victim's costume. There is quite a sizable amount of evidence here. I mean, the knife is not a murder weapon. Like, he, he was murdered by being strangled. The, the being stabbed after he's dead it is not, it's not part of the murder. <laughs> There's quite a sizable amount of evidence here. I can safely say that any further del deliberation is a waste of your honour's time. Although, I wouldn't mind if the defence were to present evidence not yet shown to the court. Evidence not yet, not yet shown? It means evidence that the court hasn't seen yet. In other words, new evidence. What does the defence have to say about this, Mr. Wright? Um, well, Phoenix. The judge is favouring the prosecution right now. If we answer with something wrong here, that gavel of his be ringing out to the sound of our defeat. Mr. Wright, you have something important and necessary to present to this court. Uh, I feel like I might do, but I'm not sure what. I don't think I do, actually. Like, none of these are very helpful. Um... Museum... Okay, let's look at the photo. Uh... Is there a clue in that picture? Hmm... Nothing comes to mind. And I've seen the photo before. Like, maybe we could use this stuff to do with, um... Celeste and, and Adrian, but I don't think that's helpful. Uh, let's say no. This has to be another trap. Better if I don't say anything than risk throwing out a bad piece of evidence. Looks like the defense isn't saying a peep on this one, which means this court is adjourned. Phoenix, we will lose this case if you give up here. So you had better show the judge something, quick. Slow down, we all know I have a tendency to be wrong more than... I can't even say it. There's one... One piece of evidence that catches my attention. Something that this court has yet to see. Mr. Wright, I will say this one more time. I do not feel this trial needs to continue at all. However, I am giving you one chance, and only one. What the judge is saying, right, is don't try pulling one of your usual bluffs here. I messed this up, it's curtains for all of us. Uh, I'm gonna save because I can't remember what you're supposed to do at this point and I'm a little concerned. <laughs> you may now present one and only one piece of evidence. Now then, what is this important evidence that you must show to the court? Is it the glass of juice? I like how it's called a wine glass, so they're allowed to talk about wine, but not allowed to drink it. Interesting. Is it the glass? This is a- yeah, I think, I think it's the glass. This is a wine glass, is it not? Please look at the photo of the crime scene one more time. 
scene is a mess because of the victim's struggle against his assailant. The vase was broken, his makeup is all over the floor. These were all things that were at one point sitting on top of the dresser. Hmm, well yes, I see your point. However, this glass that is sitting on top of the dresser is mysteriously untouched. The only thing that had not fallen over along with everything else is this wine glass. This piece of evidence is more than strange enough to warrant further consideration. W well, what do you all have to say? Uh, well, yes, it is a little peculiar. Y yes, isn't it? I thought it was. You can stop looking at me with those puppy dog eyes of yours now. Mr. Edgeworth? What is it, Your Honor? Your opinion. You don't need my opinion. Because there is no special meaning to that glass. What? It's safe to say that the glass was set there after the crime took place. By the person who discovered the body, Adrian Andrews, for example. She could have easily been so shocked that she set the glass down without thinking. Hmm, that does sound very plausible. Mr. Wright? Could Miss Andrews really have set that glass down without thinking? Okay, so the problem with that is, uh... Okay, I thought the problem was that there were no fingerprints. We haven't checked that. There might be fingerprints. Um, but, you know, she would have seen this scene of, of the... This here crime photo, right? You'd be like, oh my god, he was murdered. And you'd freak out. You wouldn't just calmly set it down. I appear weak here, the trial is over. I can look for my proof later. For now, I should trust my instinct to point with certainty. They just might fall for it, if you're thought-provoking enough. The defense would like to challenge the prosecution's theory. We would like to see something that proves it was Miss Andrews who set the cup on the table. Hmm, you turn the situation on its head yet again, as usual. Mr. Edgeworth, do you have any proof to back up your claim? There's no way he has any. He's just bluffing. Unlike Mr. Wright, I never say anything unless I have the evidence to support it. W what? You're not thinking hard enough today, right? Did you think this wine glass escaped my notice? Then... Of course it has been thoroughly inspected. The fingerprints. Fingerprints? There were only one set of fingerprints left from this wine glass. Only one? Well, whose were they? They were not the victims, nor the defendants. Rather, they were of one Adrian Andrews. What? Wine glass updated in the court record. That is why I said that the person who had discovered the body had left it there. Are we done here, Mr. Wright? I can't believe I fell into another trap. Ms. Andrews was probably holding the glass when she went to see Mr. Corridor. But upon seeing his dead body, she was stunned and set the glass down on the dresser. Hmm, what you just said makes a lot of sense. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Now do you see, right? You can't change any part of my scenario as it explains everything all too well. I've thought long and hard this past year about what it means to be a prosecutor. And from here on out, I will show you the answer I've come to discover. Wait a second, Mr. Edgeworth. I think the prosecution's provided enough evidence to enter my verdict. Unfortunately, I cannot allow you to pass judgement yet. The prosecution is yet another witness who would like the court to hear from. Another witness? Yes. Bailiff, please bring in the next witness. What in the world's Mr. Edgeworth thinking? Now then, witness, please state your name and occupation. Witness, your name and occupation, please. Rat a tat 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 tat. <laughs> G O T C H A. I wonder what happened to that calm composure he had earlier. Oh, Edgy Boy, it's been what, a year since we last met, hasn't it? You should be more happy to see me. I saw the rapport with her testimony, but who knew that under that helmet, it was that wicked witch of the witness stand. <laughs> God, Edgeworth. The wicked witch of the witness stand. Chill. 
I tell you, this time I know what I'm supposed to this I tell you, this time I know what I'm supposed to do. So today I'm gonna tell you anything and everything. Even things that have anything to do with that terrible crime. Miss Witness, that terrible crime is all this court needs to know. Rat a tat 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 tat. Oof. Is she actually shooting people in the courtroom with that ray gun right now? I mean But I mean we do they do allow weapons into this courtroom for some weird reason, but I mean it's a ray gun. Shush, I'm looking at my dear Edgy Wedgy right now. Don't interrupt us, Gramps. Yes, madame. No, 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 please, by all means interrupt her, please. Ahem. Anyway, witness, your testimony, please. It's true what they say, that youth are hot-headed nowadays, not that I mind at all, Edgy. Now then, what should I start with? The witness was on security detail at the hotel on the night of the murder. Is this correct, Ms. Oldbag? It was a great job being able to see my dear Ijuan. It was almost too much for my little heart to handle. You mean, you were a fan of the victim? Look, everyone is crazy over that on guard saying he's cute in a fresh way or something. But not me. I wouldn't say anything so silly. After all, I have no interest in a little child like him. I'm only interested in a real man, Juan Corridor. Um, but those two are the same age. Anyway, as I was saying, I was pacing in front of his room that night. Very well. Please tell the court what you witnessed the night of the murder. Leave it to me, Edgy Poo. Witness testimony. What you witnessed. Anyway, after the ceremony, I went to pace around in the hallway in front of his room. There was something I was interested in finding out, you know. Well, since I was on the job, I made sure to keep a good eye out the whole time. That's when someone showed up with a man coming out of poor Juan's room. It was on guard, mad on guard. He was trying to sneak his way out of Juan's room. Hmm. So Mr. Ongard came out from the victim's room. See, it has to be him. He's the murderer. I see. Well, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. What you witnessed? Okay, let's get pressing. Uh, boop. Whew. This old bag. What was your post on that? What was what was your post on that night? Post on that night. The lobby. I was supposed to help set up the stage for that trifling show. But I refused to help, I'll have you know. It was for that lead-headed samurai show. Heh, <laughs> I even took out a few of the nails. Maybe it was a good thing the show didn't go on? Besides, that manager with the glasses would be working hard at it without me. So I thought I'd take a break and spread my wings a little. And that's when you went to hang around the victim's door? something you were interested in? And just what was that? It's not some little thing I can just go around telling everyone, you know? It's top secret between me and Juan. <laughs> oh, and Edgy Poo, of course. Mr. Edgeworth, what is this thing she was interested in? I have no idea. I despise gossip, Your Honor. Gossip? But should it prove relevant, we can always have it appended to a testimony later. Looks like we should enforce it right now. Hmm. And did the witness stay in the vicinity of the victim's door the entire time? Oh, then would you tell us the number of people who went in and out of Mr. Corridor's room? I have no idea. I wasn't born so I could count things for those who I didn't pay attention in class. That's why ever since I turned 20, I quit keeping track of how old I really am. Yes, well, that would explain why your age was not included in the report. In any case, Witness then saw some then saw someone, correct? <laughs> Who in the world was that? I'm not allowed to say. This sort of information has to be carefully guarded from the masses, Sonny. A man that came out of Juan's room. It was. He was. Yes? He was? Oh, I'm too scared. I can't say his name out loud. Oh. What I wouldn't give to have Francisca's whip right about now. Well, I guess I can tell you since he was such a bad boy anyway. You saw my client? Are you sure about that? Yes, he. Really? Annoying brat, when I say I saw someone, I saw that person. Why do I get a sense of deja vu? 
Maybe to avoid a repeat of last year, I should delve into this a bit further. Please tell the court about the man's face in more detail. You don't need me to tell you about his face. That soft, gentle look in his eyes near the his feminine lips. His right eye covered by his silky hair, his sparkling, shining teeth. His teeth were... shining? Well, he's shining all around in this week's pinup poster, dearie. This week's pinup? Why do you... I mean... I don't care how he looks in this week's issue, please stay with what you saw that night. What? One guard's face is the same no matter where it is, you know, you whippersnapper. So, Mr. Wright, was this testimony just now important or relevant in any way? Hmm... I guess it really wasn't that important after all. <sighs> Mr. Wright, do you know why we say time is valuable? If not, I suggest you learn. You wasted three minutes of this woman's youth, that's more valuable than gold to me. Why do I suddenly feel old in the presence of her childish whining? She may not remember things that we mistaken here and there, but I don't think she's lying. That's bad for us. Really bad. But that's how the human mind is. It also has the tendency to jump off topic. She's strayed onto a few interesting side topics this time too, hasn't she? But that's what makes her a sweet old lady, right? And that's because you're not the one who has to question her. Okay, so yeah, we had to ask about something other than his face. I just wanted to see what happened. Uh, I'm gonna fast forward to get back to that question again. So I'm holding the B button right now. There we go. So we want to know about the person's clothes. That would be helpful. Please tell the court about the man's clothes in more detail. What a troublesome man you are. Really, as if something like that matters. But it does. Um, what was it? Oh yes, it was that thing. What thing? That gaudy thing is always wearing. That racing jacket. Ah, he was wearing that at the detention centre too. That thing's meant for nothing but seducing women out of their pantaloons. Hm, men. Um, right. So, Mr. Wright. Was this testimony just now important or relevant in any way? Hmm. It was, actually. Of course it was important, Your Honor. Then perhaps you would like to point out which part of that testimony was important. Don't you see it, Edgeworth? Your Honor, I request what the witness said about the jacket be appended to her testimony. Hmm, I don't quite see where you're going with this, but alright. Witness, please. Oh well, I don't like to badmouth anyone without reason, but if I must... Okay, so this is important because... If Matt was wearing the clothes he's wearing now with his racing jacket and stuff... That leads to a contradiction. Because these, this, this some button was found in his Hakama, which is part of his costume, his Nickel Samurai costume, which suggests that he must have been wearing it if it, if it ended up in his this costume, right? Objection! Music stopped. Here's all back. What? Don't say my name for no reason. Do you know what this is? Ah, it's button number two on the Jammin' Ninja's costume! <laughs> now I know she's an obsessed fan. She identified it in a single glance. Give it here, give it here! If you don't give it to me, I'll punish you with this! Right, tat 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 Wow. She really is a diehard fan to want a button covered in blood. This button was discovered on Mr. Ongard's body during a full body search. See? See? This button proves beyond a shadow of a doubt it was that rascal Ongard. He was caught up in the in the pl pleats, plat, pleats, pleats of his nickel samurai hakama pants. See, see, and on guard is the nickel samurai. Witness. Now it may just be me, and I do have an active imagination, but just now didn't you say the defendant, Matt on guard, was wearing his usual racing jacket? Ah, I'm so sorry. Sorry that you judge people based on what they wear. If I wore the trendiest dress, then maybe you think I'm the most gorgeous woman ever. This is going out, but your degrees have this hideous, right? I've got a tape recorder stuck on my chest. Let me tell you, it's heavy, so heavy, which we have switched to see it as ages ago. You think Dreamer Life will get out there. I work as hard with a smile on my face, so you understand. Take a look in the mirror. Your clothes are about as interesting as a documentary on curling. You take a tip or two from Edgy, but he's got style. Rat -tat 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 -tat. <laughs> now hold your tongue still there for just for one second. So what you saw in actuality 
was not Mr. On Guard, the man, but Mr. On Guard, the Nickel Samurai? When you think about it, they're really one and the same anyway. Miss Oldbag, this is a very important point we're talking about. Edgypoo, do you think so too? Well, it might be something worth considering. Just say it's important and agree with, with me for a change. <laughs> Witness, think carefully and try to remember as much as you can before you testify. <sighs> Alright, if you insist. I should be the one sighing, not you. Who I saw? Witness testimony. On guard, on guard. Yes, now I remember. The Nickel Samurai, that's right, it was the Nickel Samurai that I saw. Yes, it would have been convenient for him to wear his costume during the murder. He had to go to that post-ceremony stage show after the crime, you know. So he must have worn that Nickel Samurai costume when he was stubbing poor Juan. I... I knew it. I knew you'd say he was inside that costume. What? Did you think there could have been someone else inside that costume? Don't be a bad little boy thinking such rude things. But... But the possibility does exist. How <laughs> young is today? I told you, there is no way it was anyone else. Uh, how do you know that? Because I said so, and what I say is the truth. At least she's just as delightful a witness as she was a year ago. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Cross-examination, who I saw. Oh, uh, let me see. So let me ask you one last time. The person you saw, it really was the Nickel Samurai? Showy as ever. Haven't I been saying that from the very beginning? Can I throw in the towel yet? Hmm. You don't need to think too hard on this one. Huh? There's a contradiction in your testimony it's sitting in plain sight. The question is what that contradiction means for us. Well, let's figure out what you're talking about first, but okay. Okay, um... Let me just have a quick look through here. I believe the fact that this, this weapon has on guard's fingerprints is a contradiction, because if you have a look at the picture of the Nickel Samurai, you can see he wears gloves on one arm and has a robot arm on the, on the other arm, but he's wearing a glove, is my point. <laughs> um... Let me just try that and see what happens. Let's save again. I my memory of this case isn't great. Um Please take a look at this. Yeah, so it's a knife, big deal. If you're trying to scare me with that, I'll have you know it won't work. No no, that's not my intention at all. That's the knife that was used in the murder, correct? Your Honor, do you know why this piece of evidence is important to this case? You don't even have to ask, it's because the defendant's fingerprints are on it. Is that what you're driving at? That is exactly what I am driving at. What are we driving at, and whose car are we driving? If Mr. Ongar was reeling the Nickel Samurai costume at the time of the murder, then it's impossible for his fingerprints to have been left on this knife. Actually, he would have wiped all previous fingerprints on this knife right off. Oh, that's right, the Nickel Samurai wears gloves, doesn't he? Ruby took his gloves off before he began the stabbing. And why would you do something like that? To leave his prints on the murder weapon? There is no way he would do something like that. However, there is one possibility. Oops. However, there is one possibility. Then let's hear your possibility! <laughs> it's very simple. The defendant went to the victim's room while in costume cynical samurai. At that time, the defendant held no intent to murder. He was probably just going to relax and talk with the victim about the stage show. Which is why he took his gloves off. Hmm. But the murder still did take place. It's well known that there was bad blood between the defendant and the victim. 
Hmm, yes. I have heard that before. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you have to say about Mr. Edgeworth's theory? So let me get this straight. Edgeworth's theory goes like this. When the defendant went to the victim's room, he had no intention of killing him. Now, up to this point, are there any problems with his theory? Yes, <laughs> there are. This theory contradicts something in an earlier testimony. What, what are you babbling about? Now, for argument's sake, let's suppose Mr. Ongar was the killer. If that's the case, I think it's impossible for the killer to have gone to the victim's room without intent. This knife, this was used by Mr. Ongar at dinner. I yes, we did establish that. Which means that if my client was in fact the killer, then he brought this knife with him when he went to visit Mr. Corridor. I suppose. However, you just said it yourself. At that time, the defendant held no intent to murder. If that were true, then why would he bring a knife? He wouldn't, would he? Hmm. Which means, Mr. Edgeworth, your theory was flawed from supposition one. And one more thing. If the murderer was wearing the costume at the time of the murder, then there should be glove marks left on the knife. Which means the defendant's fingerprint shouldn't be all over it like bees on a hive. And that brings me to my final point. This knife was planted by the real killer to hide their identity and mislead us. Uh, order! Order, I say! Order in the court! Was this knife really planted by the killer? Why would the murderer do such a thing? It's to frame my client, Mr. Ongard, of course. To frame? Uh, aren't you forcing the interpretation just a little too hard on this one? But we just established that the witness saw the Nickel Samurai in costume. And if that were true, then there shouldn't be a single fingerprint on this knife. Urgh. Witness! <laughs> Looks like I've made your life a tiny bit more difficult, huh, Ejipu? <laughs> Witness, did you or did you not really see the Nickel Samurai? Well, I guess at first I might have forgotten, but... Are you saying you mixed up Mr. Ongar with the Nickel Samurai, his character on TV? But I mean, I can't really do anything about that now. Look, I was waiting around in front of their doors because, well... Well, I wasn't waiting around for the Nickel Samurai, that's for sure. She wasn't waiting for the Nickel Samurai. Alright then. Who are you waiting around for then? Hmm, that's top secret to anyone outside of security. I have a feeling that you were waiting for Mr. Juan Corridor. Am I correct, witness? Ha ha ha. The way you think, you are a sad amateur with a terrible case of nearsightedness. Amateur? Me? What am I amateur of? So, Old Bag was waiting around in front of the victim's room, but it doesn't sound like she was waiting to catch a glimpse of Mr. Corridor. Maybe... Phoenix, maybe the Old Bag was waiting around for that person. Hmm, if that's who I think me is hinting at, it's certainly possible. Miss Oldbag, you're waiting for this person to come out of the victim's room, weren't you? Adrian Andrews. Who is this person? This is Adrian Andrews, Mr. Ongard's manager. But why would the defendant's manager be in the victim's room? It seems that this is the latest rumour in circulation, Your Honour. Hmm. Oh, this is... well, this is... hmm, hmm. Ha, <laughs> I see. The judge seems to be really into the article, if it can be called such a thing. Then this manager with the initials AA, are you saying it's... Adrian Andrews? Without a doubt, the witness thought so as well. Hmm. Looks like you found me out. Well, that's fine. I can throw away this whole sworn to confidentiality stuff then. The quote should be after the word confidentiality instead of the word stuff. It's it's not right. W witness? What in the world are you? Watch out, Phoenix. I've got a bad feeling about this. A very bad feeling. 
I got some information, some very secret information from a certain source. So that's why I was doing my own little investigation. In secret, of course. But, but what for? Oh, just for myself. Personal reasons and all that. Well, Mr. Edgeworth, how will you proceed from here? I really don't want to do this. However, I cannot simply let this point slide. I see. Very well then. Witness, please testify about this secret information. Get ready. This is going to take the wind out of you young'uns. I'm sure we're all capable of handling this. Really, it's not like we're ten years old. Secret information. That on guard is one evil, evil man. He thought he could ruin poor Juan by causing a huge scandal. So to do that, he sent his own manager to get in close with Juan. I cannot condone such dirty tricks, so I took action. Oh, and this is top secret, you got that? Nobody else but you and me know yet, okay? The defendant sent his manager? What a distasteful topic for this court. What? Nobody's above gossip. Isn't there a saying? The truth is never pleasant. Never heard that one before. Mr. Edgeworth, what about this Adrian Andrews person? We looked into the matter and found that the truth the article proposes is in fact baseless gossip. Hmm. But should this be true, then this proves that the defendant did bear ill will towards the victim. So this means I have to smash this rumor once and for all. Now then, Mr. Wright, you may cross examine the witness. Be careful, the old bag seems rather excited right now. That's right, on guy is nothing but your average foul-blooded youth. Well, as the old saying goes, you've got to burn old bags with fire. Is that a saying? <laughs> Time to fire up the afterburners and hit the highway to the danger zone. <laughs> I'm gonna take you right into the danger zone. Nice. Secret information in the danger zone. <laughs> Wait. What? I'm a busy woman. Tea time with the kids is over. Secret information that no one else knows yet. If that's true, then how do you know this secret information? Huh? Well, that's because I'm a pro. Yes, that's it. It's a secret. Even if you drill a hole into my brain, you'll never find out. How in the world did all that have a secret piece of information? I believe what happened was she found this camera, which has an article that Lotta wrote about it. So no one else is supposed to know this secret information, correct? If that's true, then why do you know it, Miss Oldbag? Why are you looking at me like that? Stop that. Witness. I hate to say it, but this is how you came to acquire your secret info, isn't it? The investigative photographer, Lotta Hart. Oh yes, I remember that mischievous girl. She reported that she had lost a certain note she'd written to herself. She reported such a thing? On that piece of paper, she had written down some of her outraged uh, impressions about the relationship between the victim and Ms. Andrews. What? Outrageous ideas, you say? No, 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 I said impressions. Then, then... Then everything written on this piece of paper is completely meaningless? Ah, that's it, that's the note. Ah. Ah! No, you say this is something completely different. This is my top secret list of groceries to buy! <laughs> hmm, then you were the one who took Miss Hart's note? I'm a huge fan of Juan's, that's why. That infamous puppy haired whippersnapper. She's working with that evil on guard. She said so herself. On guard, I'm his sidekick. She was so happy, smiling like a silly duck. I was only checking what she'd written. Edgy Poo, you believe me, don't you? I was only trying to help out like the angel I am. It's only one little piece of paper. I've never taken anything else before. You really should come with a supply of cheese to match your vintage wine. <laughs> Well, it was only a piece of paper. I suppose we can overlook this just once. She looks like she's really sorry. 
Should I forgive her? Well, the problem is that that piece of paper was in the case that this camera, which is very expensive, was in. So the camera is probably there too. If I let up on her now, she'll get away. I have to find somewhere to inflict a deafening blow to the prosecution. Witness, you said that the only thing you stole was that note. Is this correct? Stole? Why don't you more careful, you annoying brat? I saved this piece of paper from the terrible lonely trash can, that's all. You're lying, damn it, and I can prove it. Are you putting my credibility into scrutiny again? Miss Oldback, I don't believe that the note is the only thing you stole that night. Camera. <laughs> Miss Oldback, that note was with a camera inside its case, wasn't it? A camera? Yesterday, Lotta Hart was raising a huge stink over her camera. She kept saying something like, My sweetie $1,600 camera disappeared on me. Why, what, witness? What is it, Gramps? If you have the note, then it's only logical that you have the camera too. Grr. Looks like you found me out again, Sonny. Is this the camera you're looking for? Ah, that's... What? Even though I look like this, I'm still a person, you know? I still eat meals like you, I fall in love and borrow things from people. Um, I think the definition of borrow is a little off. I saw that woman's business card and that's when I noticed it said, Slime bag celebrity photographer extraordinaire. Well, when I saw that, I had to know what sort of pictures she'd taken. I'm a professional security guard, it's my business to know these things. <coughs> Bailiff. Check this camera's photos, hurry! Is the... Oh right, yeah, film cameras. <laughs> we must examine them at once. <laughs> well, Mr. Edgeworth, what do we have? There is only one photo that seems to be relevant to this case. Please present it, please present it to the court. This, this is, this is the Nickel Samurai. See, I told you, that's the guy I saw. This proves that the witness was not lying earlier about this matter. What is photo added to the court record? What does this all mean, Mr. Edgeworth? This photo by itself does not prove that the person in it is the defendant. However, in his own confession, Mr. Ongai clearly stated that at the time of the murder, he was still in his Nickel Samurai costume. If that is the case, then this Nickel Samurai is... The Defendant. How did it come to this? I think this brings us to the end. We have examined every piece of evidence thoroughly. Final comments, Mr. Wright? The court will consider them before we close. Do you agree that this photo is decisive evidence against your client? If this photo really is decisive, then we're done for. But if I raise an objection here and blow it, then I would put Maya's life in jeopardy. I can't make a mistake here. There's only one road out of this mess. This photo that Lotta took. There's... Something strange with it. There's... There's something strange with this photo. I knew this was coming, right? Your thoughts, Mr. Edgeworth? I think we can all agree there is nothing strange with this photo. There is no way for the defense to debunk this photo, even with a bunker buster. Debunk with a bunker buster? Is that what you're planning to do, Mr. Wright? Um, anyway, please look at the photo one more time. If you really believe you can honestly find something wrong with this photo, then you should only need one chance, correct? Um, well... I have to find something wrong with this photo. I can't let this chance go by. Where in the heck did you take this photo from, anyway? It's a lot of focus. Why can't you take a good shot, especially when it counts? Now then, let's hear your objection. My focus looks pretty good to me. What about this photo is strange? The strange part is here. You can see the legs, like, these legs here on the Hakama, or not Hakama. Yes, Hakama? Yeah, this is, this, is the, this is the Hakama, that's right. It's all bunching up down the bottom here. Which is very strange. Take that! 
I would like to direct the court's attention to this one area right here. W what are you pointing to? His ankles? If you could see this person's ankles, that would be one thing. However, you can't. A and? What does that mean? The costume person in this photo could not have been Mr. Ongard. What is the meaning of this? I wonder if you would care to elaborate, with actual facts that is. Let's take a look at the Nickel Samurai's poster. Please pay particular attention to the area around the bottom of the, of the Hakama. His, his socks. You can see his socks. Exactly. However, in this photo, the Nickel Samurai is clearly holding his Hakama up just to walk. There's only one explanation for this. The person inside this costume is clearly much shorter than the defendant. Alright, I think I've turned things around for myself this time. That's curious. Huh? What is? Edgeworth is unusually calm today. That's true. He's just letting the trial run itself, as if he's only along for the ride. Along for the ride? What do you mean by that? I can only guess that perhaps he doesn't feel under attack at all. He doesn't feel under attack? Then I haven't damaged his case at all? Mr. Edgeworth, where does this leave us? If the person in this photo is not mad on guard, then everything the prosecution has tried to prove has become meaningless. Hmm, I feared it would come to this. What? Right, I have something I want to ask you. I think you have proven that the person inside this costume is not Mad on guard. In that case, who is this a photo of? Who is the person wearing the Nickel Samurai costume? Don't stress out over this, Phoenix, it's very simple. What you should be focused on is Edgeworth's attitude, don't you think? Yeah, why is he so calm? Mr. Wright, let's hear your thoughts. Who is the person in this photograph? It's Adrian Andrews. Who is in fact quite short. Uh, Adrian Andrews? If you want to know who that nickel samurai is, it is none other than this woman. And why would you say it must be Miss Andrews? What in the world points you to her? For starters, she's short. And she can freely move in and out of Mr. Ongard's room. Finally, she had dinner with Mr. On Guard that night. And how does that all, all that how does that all add up? It means that it makes it very easy for her to get a certain item. A certain knife with Mr. On Guard's fingerprints all over it. The knife that was used as a murder weapon. Why don't you just say what it is you want, right? I have to do this now. This is my last chance to turn things around. The defense moves to indict Miss Adrian Andrews in the murder of Juan Corridor. It was Miss Andrews who tried to frame the defendant for the crime. Order, order, order! It looks like this trial has hit a most unexpected development. Mr. Edgeworth. Yes, Your Honor. This court is issuing a subpoena for Miss Adrian Andrews. A verdict cannot be passed without first hearing her testimony. All right, this is it. This is kind of bad for us. Huh? What do you mean? If Adrian Andrews is summoned to the court as a witness, it means that the trial will go on for another day. One more day? Back! If I don't get a verdict today, then my... Uh... Now then, we shall set Miss Andrews' testimony for tomorrow. W what am I supposed to do? The judge is about to adjourn the court. Now then. Please, Your Honor, continue the trial. You must pass a verdict today. I can't do that. We cannot hear Miss Andrew Andrews' testimony if she is not... I abhor wasting such valuable time. Edgeworth? Your Honor, I request that you please continue with today's trial. But... We cannot continue due to this unexpected development. Tisk tisk. Unexpected development? I think you underestimate me, Your Honor. 
And what do you mean by that? That Mr. Phoenix Wright would slave his way to subpoenaing Miss Adrian... Subpoenaing? Subpoenaing Miss Adrian Andrews is all happening according to plan, even if Wright was a bit slow to catch on. What? What is the meaning of your statement, Mr. Edgeworth? Miss Adrian Andrews is currently waiting in the prosecution's lobby. She is the next witness. Everything... everything was planned out in advance by that man? Somehow I knew there was no way Edgeworth would overlook Miss Andrews. Looks like this battle is far from over. Exactly. Very well. We will call the next witness. However, before we proceed, we shall take a ten minute recess. Recess? Please prepare your witness in that time, Mr. Edgeworth. The court will now take a ten minute recess. To be continued. Whew! Oh my goodness. So that was quite long. <laughs> save again there we go and that's it for this video i hope you enjoyed uh next time we continue the trial yay pretty exciting <laughs> oh my goodness